to insanity. And our youths are clearly aware of this. And that is why they have taken to action. That, they, that will yield a different result. Since October 2016 till date, we have noticed total silence by the unionists to condemn the government of the Republic of Cameroon on any of its dreadful acts perpetrated on our people. They never mention the rape of our children, their own children, the naming of their own brothers and sisters, the torture of their very own mothers, fathers and children. They cannot even call for the release of our leaders and their people illegally detained in the dungeons of La Republic of Cameroon. Some of these people have first-hand experiences of the horrors of the government of La Republic of Cameroon. Yet, they play drums and dance when the master says dance. When the master says jump, they ask how high. These people remind me of the house slave, who when asked by their brother to run would ask why. This is because they are eating the crumbs from their master's table and they refuse to struggle for a life of dignity. It should be known that we are tired. Every people have a right to self-determination and it is in the human nature for everyone to be free. To the Federalists, these are those who believe and advocate for a two-state, four-state or a ten-state federation. They submit that because according to them, we can only gain the restoration of our independence through war. And they are war adverse. We should rather settle for a federation. This argument implies also that we would never ever have the right to self-determination. What this group is actually selling is that Mr. Bia's regime will continue to carry out the brutality on anyone who calls for the restoration of our nation or anyone claiming our independence. These people should be reminded that our leaders asked for a federation in January. And look where they are now. If these advocates of federalism are right, and God forbid that it should be so, what then does it say of a system that made people without arms because they are fighting for their rights? How can anyone believe that they can remain in such an oppressive system and enjoy their God-given right of freedom and liberty. I like to study the lives of people in the imaginary and use those stories to also inspire others because I think people have to live to the fullness of their potential. And I believe that the grand designer brought us here to make a difference. He brought us here that each and every one of us should live this world a better place than they are serious and have recognized our victory, our resistance over the colonization of our territory by the French using the people of La Republique du Cameroon will be the day when Julius Ayok Tabe is released from jail. He will be the man they will negotiate with and he will be the man who they will hand over our territory for him to take our people home and I'm not saying any more about Julius Ayok Tabe other than that he is the symbol of our resistance of colonization he is he shows the determination that we have for our liberation. He stands for the discipline. He stands for the seriousness. He stands for the integrity of our struggle. And I think the world have recognized that. And the day that he is released from jail will be the day that the international community is finally serious about taking us seriously as we take our struggle. I think that day is already here. I think that day is already here. And I want to take this opportunity to congratulate the men, women, and children who have sacrificed for our liberation. I've had a message on Facebook Live from Wellison who says, please can you help tell the world about what's going on in Southern Cameroon? 
That's what we're I will give do. that to you then. Yeah. yeah, this is one of the original conversations we followed in on news grid. So in Cameroon, there's an English and French speaking part of the country. The division started when the English speaking Southern Cameroonian said they were not represented in or respected by the French speaking majority government. Southern Cameroonians have been calling for independence so they can create their own country, a place they call Ambazonia. The government responded with a crackdown on the internet, travel, and continued raids on northwest and southwest parts of the country. It's unclear just how many people have died so far. In the last year, though, the situation has gotten worse. Now, just last week, Nigeria extradited 47 Cameroonian Anglophone separatists. They've now been sent back to Cameroon, where the government has described them as terrorists. Among them was the president of the interim Southern Cameroon's government, Ayop Tabe. Southern Cameroonians are demanding his release and they want to... Nigerian authorities have reportedly arrested the leadership of a separatist movement seeking to break away from neighboring Cameroon. Andrew is back with more on that story. Well, according to a statement from the government of Southern Cameroons, Julius Ayuk Taibe and several others were arrested on Friday while meeting at a hotel in Nigeria's capital, Abuja. Now, most of the leadership of this movement has fled to Nigeria and other countries due to a crackdown by Cameroon's government since November of 2016, something we've been following on the news group. I said the first speech in South Africa. I said first, they would ignore you. They would laugh at you because you don't count. And then when they realize that you count, they hate you. When they hate you, they fight you. But if you maintain your resolve after they fight you, you win. If you look at our circumstance, they have ignored us, they've laughed at us, they've hated us, now they are fighting us. There's only one thing remaining. The next thing is that we will win. 